There we go. You guys should be okay now. Let's see. We got it. We got it. Thank you, Paul. Uh, why? Where'd it go? There it is. All right. My bad. You know what happens? I'm over here cleaning, and I, I clean my my Rodecaster Pro 2, and I slid the slider down without even thinking about it. Mahalo, everyone in the chat. We're going to start all over. Hey, check it out. We just made it here to the Ecamm Live demo. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you made it this far, you'll realize that that the guy was on mute the whole time. Um, this is what you get for not looking at the comments box. Anyway, the the point of this is um, super simple. Let's get started. We're going to jump in. Just want to remind everybody, if you have a question, put the Q colon in the front to let us know because it helps us find your questions when they are there. Also, if you don't have a question, don't put Q and then add a statement. That's just messed up. It confuses people, so don't do that. If you have something you want to say and you want us to see it, I don't know, throw an emoji or something. It might help us find it, and now everybody's texting me. Um, so go ahead and drop those in. And for the last part, especially knowing that your host has a hardcore case of ADD, uh, let's keep it demo and ecam oriented. If you have questions unrelated to the demo, we will try to get to those at the end. Uh, we do have affiliate training today, so that may or may not happen. But don't worry, you can always reach out to us, marketing at ecamm.com, support desk at ecamm.com, and we get it all twisted. So, therefore, um, sorry for the audio goofing up this morning. That's what I get for cleaning the Rodecaster Pro before we get started. Boom. All right, gangster. So, a couple things we want to remind you of before we get all demo oriented. This is Customer Appreciation Week. So in that vein, we have some cool stuff popping off over in the merch store. If you jump over to the merch store, you will see we have the Live Happen shirt, proof positive I am proof positive that live happens. You guys literally watched it live happen in real time. See, live happens. So um, go get yourself a Live Happen shirt. It's $5. You can get yourself a Live Happens mug for $5, or you can get the bundle for $10. Like, kind of cool, right? You can just double up, get that bundle for $10, and it says free shipping. So go ahead, dive in. Dive in and get yourself situated with a Live Happen shirt because, again, even those of us that do this all day, every day, life happens to us too as proof positive. Also, don't forget, right after this, we have affiliate training. And the reason for that, if you're not already in the program, you're going to want to jump into the affiliate program. We got some cool stuff popping up for you coming up this week as far as that goes too. And also want to give you a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, to jump over and check out the Discord server. We got ecamm.tv slash Discord. And I don't want to get sidetracked, but hey, Christian, I see you. Um, jump over to the Discord server. We got some cool things popping off in the old Discord server, and it's kind of glorious. And then one last thing to show you, let's pop on over here and hit you with the best shot with one of these. And look, fam, you are going to want to go over to, let me 86 this and this, one more. And one more disc, uh, boom. You're gonna wanna jump over to check out our giveaway. It's going on at ecamm.tv slash CAW, Customer Appreciation Week giveaway. Paul will throw that in the chat in a second. You're gonna wanna join the contest. You can see there's only 4,022 entries. Pretty dope, 22 is my lucky number, but there's six days left. And if you enter the giveaway by doing the things down here in the little treasure hunt type situation, you get a chance to win a me. No, wait, you get to win a studio consultation with myself. You can win a Rodecaster Pro twice, like I have sitting right here on the desk in front of I, and you could win a Shure S, I mean, MV7. A Shure MV7 that is both USB and XLR compatible. So this is where you want to be. These are all the things that are happening. So now back to the demo. <laughs> all right. We are going to try to make this happen as quickly and as smoothly as possible. Again, if there's something specific that you want, we're going to go ahead and drop it in. Yes, there is a secret code. It is 3CAM. Paul will get the secret code. Da, 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 da. All right. Let's keep it on schedule. Let's go in. Uh, but I'm, I'm, it's cool to see that Christian came because I haven't seen him in a minute. Guys, let's hit the disc. Uh, what is this thing called? Hello. Let's hit the hit live demo mode. Hey, uh, Stream Deck, why are you not Stream Decking? What is wrong with you? Hold on. Hold on, we. There it is. And then loop deck, why are you asleep? Wake up. 
Sorry. I like to run my stream deck and my loop deck. Give me more buttons. Pachang. Okay, now we're in live demonstration mode, and we are waiting for the deck of loop to wake up, and then we'll be all gravy. So anyway, oh, you know what? It might be still unplugged. Never mind. We'll do without that today. There he is. There he is. All right, cool. So this is your EKM situation, right? When you first get it, yours might look a little different, but I am what the kids call a weirdo. I like things oriented in a very particular manner. Sorry, Lube Deck is doing what it's doing. Go away. We don't need you. <laughs> um, and so I line my things up like this. The most important stuff are going to be your scenes panel, as uh, Marshall calls them windows. And then your overlays panel, which is right here. You can get those by pressing a little guy like this if you need it, right? And now thanks um, to AT&T, Keely's text comes in way later after we figured it out, <laughs> but thanks Keels. Um, and then we have your camera effects panel over here, which can be controlled by the old magic wand. We got our interview panel down here. You got your comments and reaction panels. Yours is gonna look a little different than mine. I like mine in Biggin because, well, you know what I'm saying? And then, Kumasta la la, good to see you here, Kumasta. Then we have our sound levels panel, and then we have the sound tracks panel, okay? So, all right, I see we got us a new person in here. Everybody say what's up to finding my psych. Now we're gonna walk him through. The reason why I always wanna know who the new people are, we're gonna orient the demo around your questions first. Most of these other people have seen the demo going on 40, 50 times, which is cool, because you learn something new every time. And we always change the program, so we're always updating. But this allows us to focus on you. So finding my site, if you get stuck, any way, shape, or form, holla, holla, holla right away. Q colon in the front so we can see you, and then we know to pay attention to you. And the other people in the chat will help you too, because most of them know what they're doing. Um, no self-respecting streamer streams out of a laptop. <laughs> That's a joke. It's a joke. This is a Mac Mini. And it is on Do Not Disturb. But as you can see, Keely is special. She is able to slide through to Do Not Disturbs. Now let's focus. So this is our scenes window here. This is where you're going to sort of begin your show. As you can see, I kind of have a lot of stuff in here. Well, because we've been doing things. But let's start with a brand new scene. I'm going to come down here on the bottom, click this one. And I'm going to press a brand new scene. Now you'll notice right now, my scene is loading with imagery in the background. I'm going to turn all of these off. This is how your scenes normally load, but I have some special gradients. Under normal circumstances, I'll use my little Ecamm gradient, or sometimes I'll use this gradient. Customer Appreciation Week, we got two custom gradients. We got this one right here, and we got this one right here. Why I'm putting these on? I like to start with a little background, and if you notice, down here in the bottom, it literally says show in the background. So stay, I can leave this here, and I'm gonna call this scene one. Don't name your scene scene one, it's silly. But I'm gonna name my scene scene one and I'm gonna come down here to the overlays panel. At the very bottom, I got things to put in the scene. I can add an image, I can add an animation, I can add a screen share, I can pop in some text, I can put in a clock or a countdown, right? I can put in a widget, I can put in a camera, and I can stick all these things into a folder. cut which took took us to a scene so anyway this is my scene now i have my my, my gradient turned on i want to add a camera so i'll pop this here is my camera right so on this side i can hit this pencil and inside the pencil i have the ability to pick which cam link i want to operate right i can pick uh classic square circle squircle like an iPhone, and I can slide decide if I wanted to slide from the left, slide from the right, bottom or top. So let's do from the left in this case. I can adjust my corner radii. I like my corner radii at about 28. And if I wanna add a border, I can add a border. I normally keep my, personally I keep my borders around eight. 
and you will see I am a very like number oriented person. So now I can grab the edge and embiggen it as such. When I go to place it in the corner, I get these little snap to joints that make it so that I can get my lineup straight, right? So let's say I wanted to make a scene to tell you about what's coming on with Customer Appreciation Week. So now what I want to do is add a graphic. So I'll click up this graphic real quick. I'll just drag and drop. I know we have buttons down here on the bottom. I don't use those buttons. I drag and drop, right? It's, it's kind of like bend and snap, right? So I'm going to pick this up here, and I'm going to embiggen it until it snaps to the bottom. And then that's going to be about right if I want to check my space, I can come over here. You can hide, you know, your panel windows if you want, kind of take a look, right? You have all these things right here. You want to hide your window controls. You can do that. Then there's no window controls. So I can see what I'm doing. Now, also, one of the things that's really cool is going to be harder to tell this on this background, but just show you. I'm going to hold the option key, and there is a line here on the side. I'm going to crop that in oi i missed uh doesn't work never mind i'll show you in a different graphic uh depending on how this graphic was made it can get feisty anyway i'll put it like that and then that allows me to set on my graphic now i want to go ahead and add a text so let me bring my text box down here and i'll bring in my my crowns with me right so you can easily see Let's generate a text. Right? So I don't want it to be that color. Let's pick something airish. Let's go like that. Okay. Boom. Boom. Right? So I can go ahead here and you'll notice it snaps when I put it in the exact middle of that, right? And I can make it line up to the bottom so I can get everything lined up accordingly. Now I can click on this pencil guy right here and I'm gonna have this one pull in from the bottom, right? So now if I were at this scene and then I come back to this scene, it's there, right? Let me go ahead and do that again where you guys can see. So there's that and then shoom, everything pulls in. I want the shirt, I want it to come in from the top. I'm gonna hit from the top, okay? Take it from the top, tippy. We'll do that again. Go there, and then shoom. Don't you just love it when the plan comes together? Hannibal Smith, AT. See, very simple. You can do something cool like that, and within a matter of seconds, you can build yourself a scene. Uh, let's take this one step further. Let's say I want to build a second scene for something altogether different, but I want to keep my general lineup the same. Instead of starting over with another blank scene, down here at the bottom of the scene panel, we have a duplicate situation, right? This duplicates the current scene. Just so you, just in case some of y'all can't see, I'll put it on old people mode, right? So we come over here, we'll hit duplicate the current scene. In this situation, I can come over in 86 the t-shirt, but I might wanna do, um, let me do this. Edit this text and then do this. Bam, so now we got that. What I wanna do is go and grab a graphic. Let me open this image in a new tab. Boom, I'm gonna drag this to the desktop and then I'm gonna drag it in. And then I'm gonna unembiggen it accordingly, use that to line it up, use that to line it up and then lift into the middle. Get your eyeball game on, bam. So there we go, now I just did that. Let's take this one and also slide it from the right. Let's just be different. So if I were going from my scenes, I got this guy here, and then, okay, we're finished talking about Customer Appreciation Week sale, then we can go like this, and then boom, Customer Appreciation Week giveaway, la la. Very simple, very, very simple. Now I'm gonna show you something cool. I want to go ahead <clears throat> and I want to add my lower third, but I already built it, right? I'll show you how to build it again later, but say I already built it and I just want to use it and I don't want to build a second. Check this out. I can go up to the scene here where I have it. I can click on it here 
hit command C for copy, come back down to my other guy down here, hit command V for paste, and it's there. Now all I have to do is unambiguous it accordingly, right? And now it's in place. I want to make sure this is exactly the same on the other scene. We already know that the graph, not the graphic, this window, we already know this window is in the right size, right? So I'm going to say, copy this bad boy, right? I don't want to hit duplicate because that makes another one, right? I'm going to copy this again. So again, I'm going to click on this. You can, if you're a, not a rememberer, I don't know why you've been using a computer for 20 years, you know, command C, command V, but just in case you can do it from here, copy, and then you're going to come down here to the bottom. And then when I hit paste this time, I would never do this. It's so weird for my hands to do this. Um, it goes in the exact same spot. So when you know you need things to be where they need to be, just use copy and paste, and then you can edit the item in place. That way you get it to line up exactly right. So now everything is everything, right? So there's a couple different things you can do. Um, please rephrase this question. Please, please rephrase this question and more. Cause what do you mean in a larger preview window? I don't understand. I am assuming you mean make this interface bigger. Uh, not yet coming in version four, but use your Mac command option eight. You can make it as big as you want, right? Look, if I hold down a control key and scroll my mouse, I can make it obnoxiously big. So if I hit command option eight, now it will go back to the same size from anywhere. And what we do is we put them on the stream deck button. Now I got to resize back to my size for demonstration purposes, which is about right. Chuck. And then, yeah, so you can set, you can set that up inside system settings. Mine won't make any sense to you. If I show you that right now, because I'm in Ventura, uh, beta, which won't make any sense to you, but I have made this video plenty of times. And in many of the other demos I have showed, and it's just inside accessibility under zoom. And then you can do that. But yes, good question. Absolutely good question. You can 110% just zoom in like I do in the demo, right? Super simps. Bye -bye. But yes, we are changing that because in the, in the comments and reaction window, you can scale it, but that's the only window that scales. Um, because when, they first made it. Uh, Ken and Glenn didn't realize that people as old as Paul would use the application. I'm joking. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Y'all going to get me fired with my stupid jokes. Anyway, let's get in there. So see, now I got to tweak out on my, on my setup over here. So let's do something else. We covered how to bring in the graphic. Let's bring in a GIF. Let's go get us a GIF. And it could be a movie. It could, like I have movies built in like this. That's that's an idea of an animation. But let's go get you guys a different animation. Uh, oh, this one is great. This one is great. Uh, I can't do that. Man, it's funny because all of the the gifts nowadays have um naughty jokes in them <laughs> let me see what's popping today uh why why oh here's a good one nope that's not even moving let me just do it this way Every time you think it's going to be simple, you have a hard time. I got it now. I got it now. Let me drag this to the desktop and then move this out of the way for a second. And you'll see if I drag in the GIF, the GIF works. So you can have it, you know, set up where I'm using the mouse keys to get that final adjustment where I want. 
And then I can put this on a hot key on my stream deck, or I can put this on a hot key with my keyboard, right? So let's hit the hot key and make it R. So whenever I press R, that can just pop up. Now, right now, if I go to this scene and press R, nothing happens, right? You'll hear the error code. So what I can do with this guy is take Duane and slide him up into showing all scenes. So if I zoom in over here, it says showing all scenes and there is Duane. So now I can hit R and then Duane can pop up. Or I could be all the way back here at the beginning and hit R and Duane can pop up, right? So if you have a, a, a running joke that you and your crew use or you want to have a, a thanks or this is important type of gif or animation, you can do that and just put it on a high key. And whenever you put it up, I can say, can you smell a la 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 with Doc Rock 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 is cooking. There you go. <laughs> so you can do silly stuff like that. And uh, I'm now I'm going to have to remove that before I leave it in there all the time and mess my own self up. <laughs> so, um, you are a baby, Christian. All right, boom. So, <laughs> exactly, exactly, Christian. Gory Pro, uh, there is no, uh, there is no off-topic questions. Mommy, hit me separately. I'll get you because we got to keep the demo tight today. But I got you. Uh, pa -pa. All right, cool. Let's dive into uh, we screen share. Let's come back down here on the bottom where we is. So let's say I got this tightened up. I'm gonna hit duplicate again, and then I'm gonna remove this bad boy. And then I wanna be able to show you guys how to do something. So let me make sure we are in a good space. There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this uh, screen share icon here because there's a couple ways to do this. You could ultimately make a new scene and let's hide these overlays for a second. Okay, beat it, beat it. All right, so you could be here and you could have your center icon up here where it shows the share of the screen. I hit that and that just shares the screen. And so now I can switch it from current application specifically to Discord and then zoom to the app window. And now I got the Discord popping in here. I personally almost likely kind of sort of, for the most part, never do that. Hello, how are you guys doing? Klaus, we get up. What I like to do is come here and hit the screen share overlay. You'll notice that guy down here in the bottom where there's like a little I, iMac looking icon, right? Poop that guy, right? Hey, why is my uh, about this Mac turned on? <laughs> I didn't even know that was back there. Beat it. <laughs> That's funny. Didn't even know. Now you know. Yo, slit. She's driving me. Sorry. Come over here, select the application that you wish. I'm going to select Discord in this particular case. Then now I am going to move it to where I want it to go. So let's put it up here in this corner. Let's embiggen it accordingly, right? Let's say I want to embiggen it about this big. And then I can put my host camera back in and then we're going to turn this guy smaller. About cha, about cha. See, now I can talk to you about all the myriad things that are going on in Discord. Like, notice, welcome to the Ecamm Discord server. You're going to want to start here. We have a start here, see? And so I like to use that. The only difference, the only difference in doing it this way versus doing it the other way I just showed you, which is press the plus sign, come over here and just hit the screen share is in the screen share version. You can zoom using the scroll wheel, whereas the other way you cannot, right? So, oh, it's my scroll wheel is tripping today. There we go. There we go. So 
I, I tend to use this way the most. Every once in a while when I have to show detail, I'll go this route. But those are your two ways to do a screen share. Okay? So, very, very cool. Very cool. That is the scenes area in a nutshell. But, uh, yeah. Simple. Loop back, Roadcaster Pro 2. Easy question. One or the other. You don't have to do both. Roadcaster Pro 2 can do it. Lubeck can also do it. I actually have Tone. It won't, I don't think it's going to work because I have my thing broken. Oh, it doesn't show up. When I have um, Discord, I mean, before I accidentally updated to Ventura Tony, I had a selection called Discord Audio. When I updated to Ventura, it destroyed Lubeck. <laughs> Uh, don't do that. <laughs> so I got to wait for Rogue Amoeba to provide a fix. But yes, I actually had one of my choices said Discord audio is, is kind of cool. Super simple. All you need to remember is capture when mute. Mute when capture. Anyway, so we've got that. We've got the animation. We did the screen share. We kind of covered text a little bit. I want to show you one more thing inside the text. Let me come over here to the Discord and click on the rules. And let me grab rule number one and then copy this. Actually, this is silly, but I could grab the whole thing. I'm just curious of what's gonna happen. I'm, this might break everything, but I'm cool with it. I'm absolutely cool with it. So I'm gonna come here. Let me destroy the background for a second. Select this guy and then Paste plain text. Select all of that. Let's turn it to black. And then put the background on. And then make it small. And then add. Okay, that was dumb. Now, watch the trick. I'm going to hit this guy at the top. I'm going to change it to scroll and tick. See? And then select all the text. Come back over here and hit the dark navy blue I had hiding in the corner, and then say save. Ooh, that's fast. Grab the turtle, pull it back, and then I might want to embiggen this a little bit. Oh, not that much. Criminy, Doc. Criminy. About like that. See what I did? So there you can. You can take a large portion of text and put it in the scroll and ticker. And yes, I can have the entire Discord rules scrolling along the bottom of my window while that's just crazy. That's crazy. That's the first time I did that much text in my scrolling ticker. I normally don't put that much in there. Matter of fact, I personally normally don't use scrolling tickers too often. They're a little bit crazy balls, but hey, there it is. Now, let's show you guys something absolutely fun. This is one of my favorites. And I'm going to show you this as a way of teaching you how to do widgets. I'm going to skip over clocks for a second, and we're going to go to widgets, right? Um, and we'll come back to clocks. I'll show you why. Let me come over back to the old Chrome. And then... Let me cover this real quick. By prompts, I'm assuming that you mean user interface, in which case, under the, uh, under the window options, hide main control windows, which is command tilde, right? So as you can see on mine, I don't have anything on. You can also temper, if you turn this on, so you can see everything, you normally can temporarily hit the function key, um, but... I'm using a custom keyboard right now, which doesn't really allow that to do what you want it to do. But you can also just temporarily press FN key. They'll disappear. Or you can hit Command tilde and they go away, right? You can also make your, if you're fancy with it, you can make yourself a Stream Deck button, which does that too, right? So that's how you do it. All right. Let's go back to what I was doing. I'm going to go here and do overlays. This is one of my favorite things in the world. 
actually, I'm going to use this scene down here. All right. So this is overlays dot uno. I love this thing. This thing is super cool. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna hit try overlays. And what I want to do is have a breakdown of what we're going to do for the rest of the demo. Right? So I'm gonna look in here. I'm gonna find something. Uh, I like this guy right here. So I'm going to press this and say, try overlay. I'm going to get a window like such. Of course it's being slow. All right. So let's go right here. Type in Ecamm demo. And then we're going to do scenes overlays, sound levels, sound effects, and then comments. All right, boom, we got it all in there. So right now I'm gonna move the app, app uh, the active topic to topic number two. Right, so you see the little red guy next to it is moving. So there it is. If I want to customize this, which I do, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change this uh, background color to orange because that's where we're at. Right, and then I want to maybe change the title color to uh, uh, let's do red just because it's red. All right, cool. We got everything there. Now I can go over one more guy here and I can adjust these various different things. See how many panels we have, whatever. Now that I've made this right, I can click on this guy and say, copy the URL. Okay. We're going to come back over to our Ecamm window here. Let's jump back up to the main window where it is only I. So it's less confusing. So I'm here. I'm going to press down here on the bottom. There is a globe. Right in the, in the overlays panel, there is a globe. It says new widget. I'm going to press that. I'm going to just to make sure I got the right one. I'm going to paste this in. Right. And then I'm going to leave everything else alone and I'm going to add this widget. I'm going to give it a second to think and then boom, there is my guy. Now I want you to see something really cool. So I'm cropping it just because Sometimes if you don't crop your widget, you try to click on something and the widget control box is in the way. So I'm going to put this guy right over here. Now, command backspace takes me back to where we were. I want you to check this really, really carefully. I'm going to press on the second box here, which is copy control URL. So I'm going to copy that. All right. Now I have that. This is where it gets fantastic. I am going to ba, 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 go back to here. I'm going to pick up the old phone. I am going to text Mr. Paul Duncan in. Paul Duncan in Louise Ouija. And I'm going to paste this in. All right. I'm going to send it to Mr. Paul Duncan in. Okay. So now I'm going to have Paul like change comments to camera effects. And I will keep my hands over here and you'll see that Paul will be able to open this up and change what we're talking about. And then as I switch to sound levels, he could even control it by in the uh, talking points panel in there. He can control it by switching the active topic to three, in which case that happens, right? So. I'm here. I'm talking about overlays right now because I'm about to show you guys clock. Oh, you see that? It happened on the fly. I'm about to show you guys clocks. And after clocks, I'm going to switch to sound levels. When we get to sound levels, without me touching anything, Paul will be able to move the little, the little red thing down to sound levels. Or if somebody squirreled me and changed topics, this... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you. This is why this is cool. If I'm in the middle of doing my show 
and every once in a while you'll get a squirrel topic that is really good so you might have to pivot your show you could have your uh associate producer automatically come in and fix these things while you're doing the demo. So this is what's cool about unos.overlay. For right now, they're free. They, I'm sure they're gonna become paid at some point, but for right now, they're free, and you can go and try this right away, which is super handy. And what's funny is I'm looking at the window up here, I can actually see Paul making changes on the fly, right? It's really, really cool. So. I love this. There's tons of different overlays available to you. There's clocks and countdown timers. And like, if you do sports at all, like Keely, you can put in sports scores. It's, it's kind of fan glorious, but I kind of like this. So while we're doing that, let's get on to talking to you about some of these time pieces. And I'll leave this up so you guys can see Paul's changing stuff over there. <laughs> He's having fun. So here I have my standard issue clock for countdown for a requisite amount of time. We can do countdown to a date and time. It can just be a all American clock or it can be a stopwatch, right? So let's do countdown to a date and time and let's put in 12, 25, 22, 12, zero, zero. We have 183 days, 15 hours and 17 minutes until Christmas. So you can do that. Now, one of the things that everyone used to do a lot, oh, I mean to do that. Sorry, I just am big in the heck out of this shrink. Uh, one of the things that everybody used to do a lot, and I'll take this off, make a next one, is do countdown for an amount of time. So you might come over here and let's put uh, one and then hit enter. What this does is you'll see down here, I have auto start, which is gonna, whenever the scene runs, it runs, and then go to next scene when finished. So if I check box that, as this scene is running, run DMC, as this scene is running, it will automatically switch to the next scene whenever this is done. So I had a question come up this week about I'm a teacher, I do quizzes, and I want there to be a buzzer or something to go off when you're done. Make this scene, have this run. In the next scene, you have a panel that says time's up and the buzzer sound and say the buzzer sound is 10 seconds long. You make another one of these that's 10 seconds, hide it behind the panel that says time's up and then have it go to the next scene, which is just back to you going, hey, look at here, I'm the teacher. So you can do something like that. And then I'll, I can actually build it. And as fast as I said it, I can build it because it's kind of that dope. So anyway, we're gonna let this switch to the next scene. And one second, bye -ya! Okay, so let's go back and build it at real quick, just so you can see. I'm gonna press stop on this, right? Let's leave that run for that minute. I'm gonna make a new scene, boom. Hit the text box right here, giant letter, T-I-M-E-S, up. Bam, our teachers were mean, right? Throw a little emoji. Boom, come back up here. Throw a little emoji. Turn off the border. May not need that. And then we're gonna select this as red. I'm just picking colors. I don't even know it's gonna look good. All right, so I can take this and I can embiggen it. Right? Boom, tough acting, ten acting. Okay, then I'm gonna add to this scene, DJ horn. Right click down here on the bottom in the sound panels level. I wanna click on the gear and I wanna say add this scene. All right, now let me double check this one more time. It's only two seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna take my teacher scene and I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna put this in the middle. 
right? I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to add a clock right here. And I'm going to literally make this zero and I'll make it last like five seconds. Okay. I'm going to take the clock, hide it behind. Actually take that back. Cause I don't have a graphic. Actually, I'm going to cheat and put the graphic in the middle. So now you don't see the, the, the clock is there, right? Double click on my clock, go to the next scene, right? I'm going to save that. So now I'm going to start back up here. Okay. So what's going to happen? Oh yeah. So this, <laughs> why is Paul a great moderator? So this doesn't have to keep loading every time you can click on the pencil and say, keep running. Then it won't load every time. It'll just stay there. When we come back, everything will be in place, but you're going to see as this timers goes down, when the pencil is up, the pencil will be up. It will quickly poop down to the next section. And then you'll see it, it, it's kind of simple. It's super simple. And thank you, Paul, for this. The Uno's dot overlay thing is glorious. I absolutely love it. And just to make sure you got it, Keely put it again. And then um, Sean is updating his A7 III. I saw that. <laughs> yes, please don't forget to hit the like button. Also, various cool. Oh, Robert, I got you. It's so simple. I got you. It's super simple. We will take care of that. And then, all right. But so simple. It's so simple, right? So if you have the kind of test or if you're a fitness person and you're doing like loops and things like that, yeah, all of the above is in there like swimwear. So going back to this question, Robert says, is there a way to play continuous music um, whenever I switch scene, the music starts over? Sure is. Uh, let's see. Let me move this up here where you guys can see it. And I have a folder. This folder says ECL demo. Unfortunately, I believe what I put in here is all Christmas music, but let's just, you know what? I'm gonna go to 92 music. I have another one. I'm gonna come over here to 92 music. I'm gonna press play. It's gonna be loud for a second, but I'll turn it down. All right, so I'm gonna grab the sound effects panel, make it semi quiet. And I'm gonna just leave that run for the rest of the time. It will never change. It's just gonna keep going because I pressed it from the sound effects panel. I did not add the music to the scene. So if I change scenes, nothing happens. The music's still the music. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not added specifically to the scene. If I come over here and generate the next scene, it's still there, you know? If I switch this to let us see overlays.uno, or in our case, let's switch it to Discord. That music is still playing. So the way this is set up, and let me go back to uh, blank real quick, so I don't want to confuse you. The way this is set up, everything in this folder will play, and let me, let me do something. If I pop this here, press on the pencil, come down to Ecamm Live, and come down to Sound Effects. You can see right in here, I can embiggenate it, right? Boom, boom, right? Everything in here will play. On this gear down here on the bottom, there's a little loop icon. So as long as that loop icon is on, it will flip back to the back and keep going. I have the ability to switch tracks if I want, but you can see now right here in 20 seconds or so, it will drip to the next song, right? If I wanted to see the songs in this list, I could turn down the disclose folder. So right after in about 15 seconds, the song will switch. So let me volume up for a second and I'll take a drink while it switches. This is not a 40.
gang. <laughs> Super sorry about that. Uh, let me turn this off and let me close this real quick. Sorry about that. I had to, right when I was doing the demo for Robert, Home Depot called because my new girlfriend is coming to the office and you'll see it when I, when I get it in here, I'll show it to you guys next week on the demo, but they're delivering this thing. It weighs like 400 pounds. So I had to answer the phone call. Otherwise I won't get my delivery today. Super sorry about that. Let's get back after it. So I wanted to show you guys again, sort of, uh, when I showed Robert, it's cool. One other thing, Robert, let me show you this before we, before we change topics, because that question was fantastic. Let me hit Apple music real quick. Now people, do not, I repeat, do not play copy roaded music in your thing. All right. It will get you in trouble. But on that same notion where I had the screen share, I'm going to switch this to Apple music, uh, music. All right, cool. Now notice inside here, I have a little box checker it says activate system audio capture. I could turn that on. Okay. So now let me pull this down where I can see. I will find something. Most of these are epidemic sound, so I can play it. You'll see it plays. And I can control it here. So you can do that. You know what I mean? You can play something through Apple Music, and as long as you have this Activate System Audio Capture turned on, it'll work. The other place to double check that Okay, enough of you. The other place to double check that is inside preferences under screen share. I'm sorry, under audio, there is never play system audio sound, play system audio sound when sharing the screen or play system audio sound all the time. I leave mine on when sharing the screen. So if you do that, that would allow you to play music from other source like Apple Music. Like that. Boom. See what I mean? So that's another way to do it. Shelly, Shelly, Shelly. How are you? Uh, grown ill boy show. Absolutely. Super simple. Let me stop you. <laughs> don't do it. Trust me. Don't do it. Um, everyone wants to do this and it's very easy to do. I would highly suggest you don't do this. We watched as a community, a major channel get deleted from YouTube by YouTube because somebody in their comment section did something bad and it was shown on the screen. So rather than just delete that video, they actually deleted the entire channel for a major brand. It wasn't my channel or Paul's channel or Shelly's channel, a major brand got their entire channel taken down because they thought rather than put comments on the screen one by one like this, we'll just put the whole comment box up there and let it go. And one of their people in the chat did something heinous. Yo, not a good look, not a good look, but it's Ecamm. So you can share any window that can be seen on your computer, right? Any window in the planet that can be seen on your computer, you can literally share it on the screen. And that includes go to YouTube, go to a live stream, click on the chat, pop out said chat and display the pop out window. Like simple. This is the pop out chat. And all I gotta do is hit the uh, screen share, click on this bad boy, go down here, go to Google Chrome and click the pop out chat. I'm not doing that. <laughs> anyway, it's simple, like, but don't do it. Trust me. It sounds cute. It ain't cute. And Keely said the same thing I said. Um, yeah, you probably don't want to do that. It's not worth, it's not worth the coolness of look at my stream It's busy. All these people are talking in the chat. Uh, the people that are in the chat know they're in the chat. They know how busy it is. Yeah, it's not a good look. You don't want to do that. Just trust me. It sounds cool on paper, but not really. All right, let's go back to this real quick. I love Ecamm. Ecamm can show you the screen of any application in the computer. Um, it can pick, it can show you any of those screens like this. Let's pop on sound levels real quick. 
So as you can see here, I got Road, Roadcaster Pro 2 chat selected. I have my movie sound. I got my sound effects, which is when I play something like this, right? I have my system audio level, which is when I play something from Apple Music like this, right? And then I have my interview whenever I'm having somebody on as an interview. So those are all available to me. Right now, I have warning signs because I do have my speakers routed over here, but I have Rodecaster Pro, so I can turn my speakers off faster than this. I just leave echo cancellation alone. But that just sound panel real quick. If I wanted to use some ancillary sound. Okay, uh, word of caution. When you are rocking the demo using uh, OS Ventura, don't add another audio interface because it might break something. So we won't do that anymore. <laughs> that was silly. That was silly. Anyway, and I kind of knew that because I did it last week. But you can add a second interface if you wish. I have my phone turned off, so it's not going to work. All right, let's close out. Let's close this party out. We got a couple other things to show you. Here inside camera effects, that's this window right here. I can scroll to the top. As you can see, I can hit green screen. I'll do blue because I don't really have green. I have purple. But you got green screen, blue screen. Don't use that. Not a fan. Uh, but when you have it on, you have control of your fade level. You can make it transparent, which means it sees the background over here as your background instead. Right? Um, you can blur the background if you need to. You can mask the edges if you need to. Things like that. But I, I never mess with that. I, I really don't like green screen at all. One thing that's cool, you got your zoom and pan. So I can like pull the Titan up. And here's what's cool about the Titan up shot. They're independent, right? So if I come over here, pop this bad boy, I can pull back just a little taste. And it looks like you got more than one camera when you don't, right? So I could even add one more shot and then give myself some room for my talking head plus graphic. So let's say I wanted to have, uh, this wall looks better. Let's say I want to do my talking head plus graphic, you know, like they do in the news a lot. I can have that there and then pull in a graphic like Dwayne. What's up, Dwayne? And so now I can be on this scene here and then be like, can y'all smell where Doc Rock is cooking? La, 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 la. You know what I'm saying? So that's really cool with zoom and pan. You can have multiple shots. And here's what's super gangster. Watch this. I'm going to take this scene, this scene, and this scene. Okay, so here's the one I made. Here's the other one I made. Here's the other one I made, right? Let's take hit the folder right here. I'm going to grab these three pieces. I'm going to drag them into this folder. Well, okay, I'm going to drag them one at a time because they're being mean. There they go. So watch this. On this folder, it's a little bit different than standard. Hey. It's a little bit different than standard because it has a clock on it. So I'm going to press on this gear, and I'm going to say change every 10 seconds. And I'll actually put random instead of next so you can see the full power of this bad boy. I'm going to press play, and I'm going to dip out. And now every 10 seconds or so, the scenes will automatically change. Like that. All right. Boom. Boom. Affiliate training's coming up. Coming up. 15 minutes. And Shelly saves the day. Hey, I like that. See, I love that. So if you have the type of show where you're going to be busy, you're crafting, you're showing off something that works with your hand, you're Shelly and you're playing dope songs, right? You're like, ooh, and you're like, do you have the time to listen to me whine? Right? You can have the scenes change all about it. Sometimes I give myself the creeps. You know what I'm saying? You could just have it switching up. Am I just cracking up? Am I just paranoid? Uh -uh -uh. Let's see. Watch. Now, Sunday, I'm watching Shelly to see if she sings that song. <laughs> By the way, nothing to do with the demo. Oakland Coffee is made by the guys in Green Day, and it is freaking good. It's a little strong if you like strong coffee, but if you want a coffee recommendation, check out Oakland Coffee. I call it Green Day Coffee. It is amazing. It is amazing. It is amazing. Uh, thank you, Klaus. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> Shelly said maybe she will. Okay, I got to stop that because it's making me go crazy watching it flip all over the place. So, um, yes. And then all you have to do really is click in here and you can adjust the time. So in the beginning of your show or during a song, you might want it to happen, say, once a minute. But then in the regular part of your show, you want to slow it down. Come here and change it to 300 seconds. Hit enter. And now it's going to take its time. And you can also switch it to be on the next scene instead of random random sceneries. And so now as we do this, it will sort of pick and choose by itself. Really dope solution. I, I, I like this before. What we used to do is make invisible clocks and hide them. And it was, it was a thing. It was kind of a thing. Okay. So hold on one second again. Home Depot calling. Hello? False alarm, Home Depot faking me out. Okay, so under zoom and pan, we also have the ability to come in and brighten or darken some stuff. You can play with color temperatures of your camera. Uh, you can change tints, which is really weird. I personally don't mess with these. I choose to white balance my camera, set everything straight, but you can do that. And we have the ability to add LUTs. Marshall Fox just did a dope video on LUTs. I won't dive into it into detail, but basically what a LUT is, is a lookup table that says, whenever you see purple, I want you to pick a different color. Whenever you see orange, I want you to pick a different color. That's what the lookup table is. Some other stuff that we can do here is mirror the camera for when you're using virtual and it doesn't play straight. We got black and white. We also got the interlace, which we don't need much anymore. That's for older style cameras. You can pick your max rezo, uh, like to uh, 4K, which I think I'm streaming at 4K today. I may have forgot to switch it back, playing around with Facebook. Ah, 1080 today. Normally I'm in 4K, but I, Facebook makes you switch and I hate it. Um, but yeah, one last thing to talk about before we switch out is don't forget, I can't change this on the fly right now because we're live, but up in profiles, you can have different profiles for different shows. So I got my affiliate training show. I got my podcast creator 50, my default show, my LGL show, my ECAM show, my, uh, LGL, uh, this week in live. I got something I did for Prezi and then version two, I was teaching someone how to do it. So you can do that. The last thing. I need to show you comments and reaction. Why we are so crazy about the Q colon. I'll show you why in this area down here at the bottom, I have a search box so I can just go Q colon and I can hit that. And immediately I can see questions, right? Any kind of cool questions like Tony had an unbreakable question. See, I can pull that in, right? Or mommy was asking about, um, the road wireless go. Uh, no, Ecamm doesn't care about what mics you're using. That would definitely be system oriented. We read what the system reads. So yeah, not that wouldn't be us, but call me if you need help. I'll get you squared away. And then Miss Beverly, you know, I can see all those questions that had came up. Um, Ecamm Lab App Audio, good question. I forgot to catch you, Dragon. I hope you're still here. Um, Ecamm Lab App Audio doesn't concern us. It's there because it's what we need to use in order to pull audio from various sources, but you should never select that. And I do know that every once in a while, system preferences will grab it, right? Like now, I, I hate that, so I just switch it back to Rodecaster Pro Main. Um, Right now with Mac OS, I haven't found a way to ignore it, but I'm trying to figure it out. And when I do, I will let you know. Sorry, one second again, people. Hold on.
okay, that's it. Uh, that's all I need to show you. So anyway, come back next week. If we miss anything, practice what we showed you thus far. If you run into some problems or you have some different questions, please send them along. We will get you straight away. You can add them down here in the bottom to the regular YouTube comments after the facts, and we'll get back there. And yeah, I just really, really appreciate you guys for coming through to the demo. Affiliates, I will see you in a minute. Um, if it's a couple seconds late, that means Home Depot made it here, and I'll be there. So just don't go away. I will see you soon. And no, we're, we're, not, we're not sponsored by anybody. It's just us. <laughs> Thank you, Julia, for making me laugh. Guys, I really appreciate you, and I will see you this time next week. Aloha. Stay